Johnny Chacon became known as the people's champion, but it's not for any reason you would expect. From the death of his friend and his stepfather, to being flow for some of the biggest brands like Supreme and GX1000, we're gonna take a look from how Johnny Chacon became a San Fernando skate icon, one of the youngest car salesmen, and the only known person to have tried the fifth steepest hill in America going backwards on a skateboard. How did this seemingly average San Fernando local become such a legend to himself in the skate community? We're gonna have to find out, but it's not the easy road you would expect. This story has been developing for over the past five years, with blood, sweat, tears, and pain in the process. Will the people's champion remain victorious? Or what will he do in his future? You know, you're not we'll see and then you now go back. on Bad Pipe Bangle. Since I was 14 years old, I dedicated my life to making a unique clothing brand. That sent me down the road of skateboarding, tragedy, comedy, and brotherhood. I'm Mark Jonathan Romero, and today I'm going to share with you an inspiration and a great friend, Johnny Chacon, also known as Pet Supreme. I hadn't seen Johnny Chacon for maybe one or two years, and he's the type of person that you can't get enough of him when you're around him. Today, I went to his San Fernando house, took a tour, and sat down with him to ask him a few questions. You know where I stay. It's a mess. I'm pretty embarrassed of that. But this is my room. It, I just washed all my clothes. What is the, what's in there right now? I don't even know. I just bought it like that from the thrift store. Take it to see it physically. Yeah, you can go ahead and take it off. Take it off. Yeah. My homie Javi, that, he took these pictures. He kind of guided me towards skating and how to do things the right way. What time did you have to pick up your uncle? I'm keeping to myself lately. It's crazy how I went from like this kid, not a kid, I mean I'm still a kid, you know. I would be doing the most like outrageous things or stunts and it wouldn't even be for publicity or for attention. I would just do it more because like I like the adrenaline of doing crazy stuff. Like, I grew up watching Jackass, you know, like <laughs> WWE, like those fools would do crazy and I just wanted to be that person that would do crazy stuff. Whether it was like jumping off of something or doing something daring. You know, Danny Duncan, he, he's one of my favorite people to watch, you know? Yeah. And I, I remember seeing him, and I was like, I've always wanted to meet you, and like, you're my biggest influence. And he was like, oh, like, that's what's up, bro, and I'll do the crazy challenge. <laughs> I like Johnny Depp, I like Michael Sarah, Jonah Hill. I think one of my favorite all-time skaters, though, is probably Kevin Bradley, because that dude was a goon. <laughs> He was a street kid, and I, I really like that skateboarding street style, and I feel like it's not really there no more. The more I talked to Johnny, the more I realized he was just a relatable and normal human. But just like everybody else, his story has dark turns, some that are not suitable for all viewers. We're also going to cover some grim topics like the passing of Angel Cisneros that sent shockwaves through the skate community. Johnny Chacon was one of the only people that was there the night of Angel's passing and was actually bombing a hill and witnessed the death. It's right by the Dodger Stadium. I'm not sure what it's called exactly, but right before the, right at the view, when, you, when, you, when the sun's coming down, you could go down the hill and it's a really good view. And so me and Angel decided to go fast down it and well, you know, accidents happen and Angel ended up losing control of the skateboard you know, hit his head and went to a coma for about two weeks. And it was a really like, devastating scene. Uh, ambulances showed up like 20 minutes later. It sucked, you know, seeing people pass by and recording. It was something that not everybody, I hope, like people don't experience. Uh, what really made me focus on other stuff was when my stepfather had died or had passed away. That was my little sister's 
my little sister's father had passed away, and then I really had to, you know, be there for my mom and my little sister, and I had to focus on how I'm gonna have more income so I could help my mom out. I didn't want my, want my mom to lose her house because my stepdad, you know, was helping her out with the majority of the money. So I kind of had to fill into these father figure shoes for my little sister and be there for my mom. And I was only 17 at the time too. And then we were like, let's go to let's go to Baxter. Next day, it's raining hard. It's Christmas Eve too. We go. We're looking at the hill. And then I'm like, damn, like I think I got this. And it was raining, like it's raining hella hard. I just threw on this leopard jacket that I had just bought it from the swap <laughs> And I was wearing the most thin pants possible with like the most crazy board setup. And I went to the top of the hill and I was waiting and waiting. And then I see a golden Tesla pass by. And I'm like, that's Christopher Chan, that's Christopher Chan. And I went up to Christopher Chan. And I told him like, hey, I'm up on the hill. He's like, no way. He's like, get on my car and film it. So I go, we got smoked on it. I ended up hitting my head really, really hard. Because I had gotten a concussion, hurt my head open. I had to go tell my mom, like, hey, I got hurt. Oh shit, I got off my skateboard. And I never wanted to skate ever again. <laughs> But obviously, you know, I still do. This is just a personal question. I'm, I'm a little curious. What's up with Lil Humper? Lil Humper! Dude, I completely forgot about that. 10th grade. <laughs> I was like, oh, the Little Humper. And then, and then the teacher was like, who said Little Humper? <laughs> And then I remember it was like, Little Humper! And then we just started saying Little Humper and it became a thing. The whole school started saying it. And then I just made a YouTube video called Little Humper, you know, because that's what everybody was saying at the time. After hearing about Johnny's darker stories and why he got out of skateboarding, I wanted to take a look into what he was doing now. So we took a 2 a.m. mission to Lake Forest to a nearby Dave's Hot Chicken where we were going to oversee his business operations for a night and get two BMWs for the price of one. I almost didn't believe it. It was too good to be true. The car owners were nice people who taught me a little bit of Russian and we talked and talked and tried to negotiate the price. Johnny brought the price down from 5000 to 3700 for the pair. Wow, I was speechless. Not only was he a good negotiator, but it actually made sense what he was saying. The cars didn't have pink slips. He had a suspended license, so he was the one taking all the risk here. After negotiating for about an hour, the car owner agreed to yeah, the other one had a sound system too, that's what I liked about it. Victory was ours for the night. And we went on our way. Pretty much I bought two cars for what I would sell one for. Uh, I paid the price of one for two. And this one's more valuable. Even though it doesn't look valuable, it has its mods. It's tuned, has a wide body kit. Needs a little bit of work, but I'll, I'll get it done. I'm just gonna go home with my girl, park them for the next couple of days. Johnny Chacon is known as the people's champion. From street skating with Supreme to flipping cars, there's really nothing he can't do. So what's next? And what's the new chapter for Johnny Chacon? 
He's a mysterious man, so we may never know. But that's alright. <laughs>